What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. And I know you guys have been waiting for me to drop my thoughts and opinions on the 2021 Royal Rumble. I wasn't able to watch it live last night, so I had to make sure I got up this morning, took time out of my day to sit down and watch the Royal Rumble. And I enjoyed it, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, this was worth the time just sitting down and just really watching it and i enjoyed it man i did not regret it at all i tried to stay off social media as much as possible last night because i didn't even want to get on live because i knew somebody was going to probably say something about the royal rumble so i wanted to go in fresh clear with no type of spoilers and i enjoyed it great way to start today uh i'm just keep it keep it simple um i'm gonna let you guys know i enjoyed this pay-per-view um now here's the thing i only watched maybe Four of the matches, the Goldberg match, the last man standing match. Wait, 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 wait. I said that wrong. The Oldberg versus Drew match, the last man standing match between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, and um, both the Royal Rumbles, men's uh, Royal Rumbles, and uh, women's Royal Rumble. So those are the only matches I watch. Other matches I kind of skimmed through because I didn't really care. I'm just being honest. And just off those matches alone, I enjoyed the pay-per-view it it, it kind of you know it was entertaining man so we're gonna get right into it i'm gonna start with the oldberg versus drew mac a uh, mcintyre match i have my notes and uh this is probably the few amount of notes i have for this match because i didn't care i didn't care and it's it's it sucks because drew was pitted against an opponent that no one really wanted to see for a while the fact that he went against Oldberg was pointless. Now, the notes I do have, it was kind of some of the highlights of the match, but it it really wasn't much to say. Drew hits Goldberg before the bell rings and hit him with a spear. That was a nice, it was nice and refreshing. Um, then, um, of course, uh, Goldberg hits Drew with a spear through the barricade. We've seen this spot countless times. It was what it was. And then uh, other stuff happened in the match. <laughs> That's I'm being so serious. I did not care for this match. I only wanted to see the outcome. And the right person won. Drew puts away Oldberg. I actually have that in my notes. I have Oldberg capitalized. Drew puts away Oldberg because this was pointless. I'm sorry. This kind of put the WWE Championship on the back burner. I want y'all to be honest with me. How many of y'all who watched the whole pay-per-view live from beginning to end forgot that match even happened? I, me, I have the luxury of skipping matches I didn't even want to see. And I forgot that match happened when it was all said and done. I was like, oh, wait. Oh, damn. Um, There was a match at the beginning. It was a, the, the WWE Championship match was at the beginning of the show. Right? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. That's how unimportant it was. The only way that match would have probably, you know, had some type of importance to it is if Drew lost. And thank goodness he didn't lose. Because I think everybody would have ran it about that. And everybody would have probably had a sour taste. Damn near for the rest of the show. So, the right person won. Oldberg needs to stay away from the WWE. It doesn't matter, man. At this point, beating Goldberg doesn't, in my opinion create any star value to new talent because it's like bro it doesn't we don't care <laughs> he's not this mystical being like he once was we, we don't care so him beating Oldberg I like how I keep going back from Goldberg Oldberg I'm gonna keep calling him Oldberg him beating Oldberg doesn't really matter man like I just he needs to go ahead retire live out the rest of his days man that's it bro like he should not be in a WWE ring or a wrestling ring no more. It's just let it go. Let the young young talent get their shine. Hopefully, they can do something with Drew and he can have a nice feud for WrestleMania because he deserves it. The WWE Championship deserves some light. So, we'll see where the WWE, well, where um, Vince McMahon, the, you know, the booking booking team, what they, what they come up with for Drew. Hopefully, it's something good. If not... Then, once again, the WWE Championship, which should be the flagship title, will ultimately end up on the back burner. So, all right, going to the next match that I watched was the Women's Royal Rumble. 
I enjoyed it. It was it was cool for what it was. Um, let's, I got some notes. I'm gonna list them down. Some of the things that I uh, um, I had watched and um, was like, okay, this you know this is noteworthy. First and foremost, I never understood why they had Jerry Jerry the King Lawler on commentary for just the women's Royal Rumble match. Like it's so I get it. That's always been his gimmick. He liked the he liked the women, you know what I'm saying? But it, it was always kind of on this some creepy type way, like a old man creepy type way. And they're still going with that gimmick in 2021. That's the only reason why he was there. Just to talk about how much he likes the girls. It was and much respect to Jerry, man. He's a legend in the business on commentary and just, you know, in the ring. People know who he is. It's just much respect to him. But I just, I found that kind of just hokey to me. Just funny. Like, we're bringing out Jerry to be Jerry. So, I thought that was funny. I had to make comment of that. Now, I like the fact when Rhea ended a match, you know, Rhea Ripley, you know what I'm saying, showing her dominance. And then Charlotte gets into the mix and I, I like this the continuing there the little feud they had at at uh last year's wrestlemania where charlotte faced um rhea ripley for the nxt title i thought that was cool they continued that feud that's what I, one thing i love about the royal rumbles you can continue previous feuds that may have ended within that match because you guys have history and it would make sense logically oh i have beef with you i remember you let's get it, let's get it going you know what i'm saying so i like that um the whole r truth segment is r truth uh from what i know i'm not sure how credible this is but apparently someone had dm me this uh, like a few months back r truth has actually watched our channel you know what i'm saying like hold on hold on hold on i'm not even gonna cut this out my laptop's about to die hold on i'm not cutting this out because i don't want to i just want i want this to be raw and unedited you know what I'm saying? Even though I'm going to edit the video. I'm not cutting this out. Yes. Because it would have been tragic if my goddamn laptop died. And then I'm just like, yo, got to do this all over again. But no. Um, what I was saying is someone had DM'd me a few months back saying R-Truth actually checks out our channel. He's actually watched our channel in the clutch page. So I'm not sure if that's true. But if that is true, shout out to you, R-Truth. That's pretty dope. But I still don't understand why they were having the 24-7 like shenanigans during this match. It kind of takes away from the women's royal rumble in my opinion i like i don't i don't think they would do this in them well I, let me not say that we're talking about vince here so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that segment in the men's match but i just think if it's a royal rumble you gotta have some type of respect you know for what's going on there and i didn't like that because i thought it was like you can have that segment go on anything just have that as a backstage segment if you want but it was kind of kind of cringe to me but apparently, Alicia Fox wins the 24-7 championship, and then R-Truth wins it back. Like, it's really R-Truth's title, bro. It's literally a gimmick championship because there's no one better to hold that title than R-Truth because it's he's so fucking funny, dog. He is so fucking funny. So anyone else that wins it. I can't take them seriously, even though I can't take that title seriously. But it's just at least it makes sense for a comedic character like R Truth to win it. But I thought that kind of took away from the match. Um, now here's the thing I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of is the Naomi memes. If you know what I'm talking about, every year, kind of what they were doing with Kofi Kingston, where every year Kofi Kingston would find a fantastic way to not get eliminated. It's kind of the same thing here with Naomi. In the women's side of thing. Every year, she'll find a fantastic way to not get eliminated. This time, it wasn't just that fantastic. A back, she fell back first, but her feet never touched the ground. I'm tired of it. it it's a meme, in my opinion, at this point, and not a funny one. It's just like, I, right, uh, it's cool a couple of times. If it's creative, I'll give you that. But that one was just, I mean, technically, if someone just falls on their back, and don't ever put their feet on the ground, they technically could do that. Why don't more people do that? Just fall on your back. Yeah, it may hurt like hell, but just fall on your back if you can. Keep your feet up, and you're still in the match. But that's neither here nor, neither here nor there. It's just kind of cringe to me. Um, now, one thing I do like about this little situation here is Alexa Bliss getting into the, the match. People, everyone's attacking her. And, and then all of a sudden, she's about to transform into her her darker fiend type character and Rhea Ripley with the biggest brain of them all 
said, damn, what the fuck y'all talking about? And just chunks her out the match. And I'm like, that's that's how you do it. Why is everyone sitting there looking scared, bro? And she's over here transforming in front of you. Even though I find that just kind of hokey in itself. Kind of like, what? What the fuck? She's transforming in front of you. How about you niggas just eliminate her and then boom, problem solved. So shout out to Rhea Ripley having a brain like, I don't know what the fuck's happening, but I'm about to get her out of here. All right, there we go. Back to the match. Like, you ain't about to transform in here and go crazy Super Saiyan. Like, what? No, help out of here. So that was a pretty cool segment. Uh, I do like, I believe the last few uh, was Bianca Belair. Uh, Rhea Ripley and of course Charlotte and Bianca and uh, Rhea ultimately tag team to eliminate Charlotte I thought that was dope and I like the person they gave the dub to none other than Bianca Belair she deserves it I am interested in seeing where this goes honestly I would love for her to go against Sasha since he's the winner of the Royal Rumble this year women's Royal Rumble what I think she needs to go against Sasha. I think that would be a fantastic match. And they're both both very talented. Oh, I think this would be I think that's that's who Bianca should go against at, at WrestleMania. What do y'all think? Bianca versus Sasha. Do y'all think that would be a match y'all would be interested in? Because I know I would. So comment down below. Let me know if y'all would be interested in that match. Cause I definitely would. But overall. Women's Royal Rumble was cool. It was kind of, it was too much cringy, hokey moments going on. But for the most part, I think the right person won here. It was enjoyable. I watched it for the most part all the way through. There was some parts I was skipping through, like the Nia Jackson and the uh, uh, Shayna Baszler stuff. I didn't really care. Kind of sh- skipped through certain parts. But for the most part, I enjoyed it. And the right person won. All right. My favorite match of the night. I'm sorry. The Royal Rumbles were cool. But I knew this was going to be the fa- my favorite match of the night. And when I say I have notes on this, I have notes on this. We're going to dive deep into this. Hey, before we get into this, I called Dub before I recorded this video. And I told him, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I just want you to know, your boy Roman Reigns is a despicable human being. He went mega rogue tonight. And <laughs> Dub was like, yo, that's, that's what I love to hear. <laughs> I was like, yo, you don't understand. Roman was despicable. He's like, that's what happens when you go rogue. So he'll probably check out some of the clips later on. I know he would have loved watching Roman Reigns just, 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 be, just become evil, man. I, it's crazy. Dub hadn't really been watching wrestling, but anytime I mention Roman Reigns and his rogue, rogueness now, he enjoys that. So that shows you somebody that doesn't even watch wrestling like that can enjoy a product. In someone because they went heel. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get into this. My favorite match of the night. Roman versus Kevin. Last man standing match. Got notes for days on this one. First and foremost, I love the promo package before the match. Fantastic. Gave me goosebumps. Sold the story. Great. I just wish they could have like more like licensed music like they used to back in the day. Like them licensed like rock songs used to hit hard, bro. Man, comment down below what were some of your favorite promo packages from back in the day. Uh, one I can think of offhand would obviously be the uh, Helen. Uh, no, the uh, I think Elimination Chamber. No, I take that back. Take that back. It was the Survivor Series Alliance versus um, versus Team WWF. That promo package was awesome, bro. That that promo package, the winner takes all promo package with the song. I forgot the name of the song that was in it. Comment down below if y'all know what I'm talking about. Promo package like that with licensed songs always hit harder. They don't really do it as much, but I, I wish this one had it. Um, all right. First and foremost, I have to say this. Match started off. They going at it. Roman hits a nice spear on Kevin Owens outside the ring. When I say Roman spears... It's like when she went rogue, they they looked so more deadly. I don't know if y'all noticed that. Like he literally, he's not spearing people in like their chest. No, he's like the torso area. He's spearing people like upper torso, chest area. This region, he's spearing you right here. That's a different like different level of impact, man. 
stuff looks brutal as hell. So I love his his spears, his rogue spears, as we're going to call them. Um, the fighting in the virtual crowd area, I thought that was cool. They're just going up the level, hitting each other's heads off the little LED screens, man. Just brutal stuff. I was enjoying it at this point. I'm hooked. Uh, where's Kevin Owens? Kevin hits Roman multiple times with a steel chair up on the upper platforms in the virtual crowd. And the knees, smart thinking. It was the last man standing match. How about I just take out your knees? You can't stand if your knees are destroyed. So he's brutalizing his legs, man. It was it was it was smart tactics. I like that. I like he, he he's using his brain. It's not just mindless violence. All right, it's the last man standing match. Let me use a weapon of choice to make sure you can't stand up. I like that. All right, now he, this spot was nice. We've seen a little bit of this spot on SmackDown. If you guys remember, Kevin Owens uh, got thrown off. I was like, the, it, I want to say it was like the second level, maybe second to third, like second level on SmackDown from the virtual stands all the way down to the ground below through some tables. This time they was even higher and Roman threw Kevin off all the way down to the tables. Oh my God, man. The impact on that sounded so brutal. This was higher than it was on SmackDown. Don't even know how he got up because I wouldn't have got up. They probably would have to Cardi B off to the hospital. So he gets up. Kevin Owens gets up. He's just walking through the back. There's like a little back area. Now, this entire time, you don't see Roman. They they cut away. They're just following Kevin at this point. This caught me off so guard. This is, what, this is where production comes in the key. And framing your shots. Like I said, they're just following Kevin. You don't know where Roman is. Like this backstage practice ring area. And all of a sudden, Roman Reigns is in a golf cart. And he hits Kevin Owens so hard. Kevin Owens flies like he hits. Like I can't even describe it. I'm trying to describe it the best way I can. So y'all can get a visual image if you haven't seen it. Kevin gets hit so hard. He flies through the plexiglass on that's on the front of the uh the golf cart and just lands on the ground with a thud like it was basically like just a just a massive just powerful thud and those are not like the slow golf carts those are the ones that can get some speed he hit him with a decent amount of speed broke the plexiglass he just splats on the ground i'm like i did not even see that coming i thought that was a nice surprise spot that was pretty pretty cool not gonna lie to you so at this point, Kevin is still not giving up, as I expected. He's leaning on this table in the back area. And I thought this was so funny, bro. He hit Roman Reigns over with a random clipboard that was laying on the table. He just goes around, smacks him, like, shut the shut the fuck up. <laughs> just hit him with a clipboard. I thought that was funny. Roman starts just beating the hell out of him, right? Then this is when things like really ramp up because at this point, Roman's in control. Kevin just got thrown off, <laughs> thrown off this little, um, the little virtual stand area, barely can walk. Then got hit with a, a golf cart at full speed. So much force. He went through the plexiglass. Now he's over there still barely trying to stand up. Roman is talking so much trash and this is why i told dub he went mega rogue in my opinion the dude started talking about his kevin owens dead family members that is how you build a heel kevin owens family members we all know the promo the emotional promo he was talking about about his grandfather about his dad and how much they were there for him and all this other stuff how he has the initials tatted on his knuckles and He's over there, like, basically, like, yo, yo, your pops, would he be proud of this? Like, just really just being disrespectful, and it was so good, dog. And when that happened, Kevin Owens, he just went into a blind rage. He just went insane. He just went into a blind rage, started attacking, started just, just hammering Roman Reigns with fists. I thought that was such... That's how you build a great heel character. When a heel character can get under the babyface skin, you want to see Kevin Owens beat his ass because that's a real thing. Kevin Owens did, you know, lose, you know, people that he cared about. And Roman is making light of that. 
That's great heel work. So at this point, Kevin Owens is losing his mind. He's attacking Roman. He's not showing no mercy, bro. This was nice. He sets him up on the table. He goes on like these little little top containers. He gets on. It's a nice little frog, frog splash all the way to Kevin. I mean, all the way to Roman Reigns through the table. Roman Reigns is heaving in pain. That's a lot of weight, so I can understand. And at this point, Kevin is showing no mercy. He's like, all right. We're not done. You know what I'm saying? You you, you disrespected me for the very last time. So now I'm going to put you away. All right. So here's when things get just oh so nice, man. This was a beautiful, beautiful spot. Kevin Owens gets this forklift. Mind you, Roman Reigns is on another table now. He's just propped up on another table because that's the only way he was able to get to the 10 count. Kevin Owens drives his forklift, raises it all the crane, all the way to the top. He climbs up there, gets on the very top, and I love this line. He says, my dad sends, sends his best, bitch. Like, sends his best regard. This was so dope. My man hits a senton off the top of the forklift on the Roman Reigns through a table. Oh, my God, bro beautiful spot i loved it because it just made you feel so good because you know roman reigns deserved that and i like the commentary before he hits it this is for my dad you son of a bitch i love that bro this was so good beautiful beautiful spot roman at this point is looking like he's about to lose this match he's just i'm sorry I, I, that's a lot of weight i'm not even trying to be funny for someone to literally hit that on you from that height ridiculous don't know how if he doesn't even have broken ribs like that was ridiculous bro so roman still somehow able to make it to the 10 count so kevin gets him up they're about they're about to go back to you know to the actual ring area and kevin is talking trash he was like whose blood is this on your face it's not mine this must be the tribal's blood like this was so good because kevin is he's in this mode like yo bro you have fired me up. Now I'm about to talk trash and beat the crap out of you. This ain't my blood. This is the tribal's blood. You you know what I'm saying? You, I thought you was going to do this to me. Roman Reigns slightly busted open a little bit. This is how it should be. It's a brutal match. All right. So they get to the stage area. I kind of knew where they were setting this up. You can kind of tell the way they was positioned that somebody was going to get speared either off the stage or through like the LED because they were fronting the LED lights. And of course, Roman Reigns sets it up, spears Kevin Owen through the LED uh, lights. Nice little spot. Nothing too crazy. Now, I'm thinking in my head, Kevin Owens hasn't gotten up and it's like at the eight count. Like he hasn't even stirred. And then it's at the nine count. I was like, bro, is it going to end like this? And the way they position the camera, once again, that's always important. You can't really tell that the edge of the stage is where Kevin Owens is at. So when he gets to nine, all he does is rolls over and he's on his feet because the stage is not that high. I was like, that was smart. That was smart. I like that spot. That was that was pretty cool. Didn't see that coming. So, all right, uh, where we at next? All right, so he, he rolls off just in time. Then... Roman Reigns gets some cuffs. We're about to see some more cuff cuffs again. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to cuffs, uh, Kevin Owens doesn't do too well. So, uh, uh, Kevin Owens handcuffs Roman Reigns to like this steel support beam post where the lights are. So, and he handcuffs him at the very lowest point. So, it will be so hard for even Roman to stand up. Damn near physically impossible. So, he can't get up. And the match is over. From this technical standpoint, tech on this technicality, it's over because Roman can't physically stand up because he handcuffed him to the lowest part. Right when it gets to like nine, and I laughed at this because I thought this was so funny, Roman pulls the ref towards him, and the ref ends up hitting this other support beam. He goes face first into the support beam, and I was like, oh, that's how he's going to win. I knew there had to be some way because he was about to lose. And then, of course, Kevin goes over there to, you know, finish the job. He gets hit with a low blow. Sorry. doesn't matter who you are unless you got a steel cup on, which I never understood why wrestlers didn't just wear a steel cup. Hey, you can't low blow me if I got like a cup, my guy. <laughs> but he lows blows him. Kevin's on the ground. Of course, Paul Heyman comes out there with the keys 
to unleash uh, um, Roman Reigns from the situation. And then, of course, Roman hits Kevin with the guillotine. He locks it in. It's cinched in tight. The match is over at this point because Kevin is not waking out of that. It's a, it's a nice submission move. He ends up winning the match that way. Even though it's a no DQ, he ends up winning by heel tactics. And Roman Reigns retains the title, man. But Kevin Owens looked incredibly strong because this was actually one of the very, I think, the first time we've seen Roman Reigns since this new character, this new heel turn. Y'all probably wondering why I just did that. So... I don't know if you've seen early in the video. I'm sure you guys did. Uh, I plugged in my charger to uh, my laptop. But guess what? The power wasn't on. The power that, you know, I have like a little like surge protector. A little surge protector, but it, it wasn't on. So, yeah. Like a little power strip that I have all my electronics plugged into. Wasn't on. So, my laptop was actually just about to die in a couple of seconds. That's crazy. I'm still keeping that in, too. I don't give a damn. But, yeah. Roman, once again, retains as I thought. And Kevin Owens looks incredibly strong, as he should. He did his thing, man. Uh, yeah, man. I think the feud is over at this point, honestly. They they don't need a fourth match because Kevin's not winning. But they made the ultimate baby face, and Kevin didn't look bad in defeat. You knew Roman was going to find a way to win. So I enjoyed this match. This was fantastic. I suggest you guys go watch this match. If you don't check out anything else on the Royal Rumble, check this match out. It's 30 minutes of entertainment. I love this match. Looking forward to seeing what Roman has to say on this uh, week's SmackDown. And last but not least, of course, the Men's Royal Rumble. Let's get into it. It was cool to see Edge come out as number one. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He comes out as number one, right? And who else should come out as number two? None other than Randy Orton, the guy that put Edge on the shelf. Randy doesn't even, I mean, it doesn't even wait for Randy to come down the ramp. He runs up the ramp and starts attacking him, which huh, I understand. That's what you do. Randy, you tried to end my career, so I am going to end you before you even get into this match. When I say they were just going at it, Edge, I love, the one thing I've always liked about Edge, his, spa his facial expressions are some of the best, bro. Like, he looks like a deranged individual when he's upset and enraged he starts doing this y'all know the motion he starts doing the little hair motion and pulling on his hair his eyes get big he just looks deranged and i love it he it wasn't when he saw randy the story they was portraying i'm not even trying to win i'm just trying to end you because you tried to end my career so i'm going to hurt you i'm going to show you why you you made a bad judgment call. And I love this. Loved it so much. That that was the overlining thing for the first part of this, of the Men's Royal Rumble, bro. When I say Edge was showing no mercy, I have these as notes. Edge is showing no mercy, bro. Any, like, he's not even, like, they'll get in the ring. They'll get under the ropes. And he's just, he's not worrying about anybody else. He's just attacking Randy Orton, bro. On the table, repeatedly, repeatedly. He's hitting him with chair shots, trying to take out his knees. It was so beautiful. Of course, they set it up where, of course, they had to take him to the back because he was medically hurt. So they set it up, and that's how they got Randy out of the match, the majority of the match. But you knew Randy was going to come back. Uh, it was cool to see Carlito. That was interesting. Carlito returned. Looks like he's in great shape. You know what I'm saying? He's, Looks more bulked up than he was when he was here in WWE. Uh, his gimmick was always mid-cardish at best. But it was cool. You know what I'm saying? It was cool to see Carlito in the mix. Um, the Bad Bunny segment was cringe. I know they had a performance. And I have actually randomly just happened to see the video where Bad Bunny had Booker T in, the, in his music video. His actual music video. And he was literally in the video. Booker T is just sitting there with his arms crossed the entire video. So it was kind of cool to see them perform that. And Booker T just sitting there with his arm crossed on the stage as Bad Bunny's performing that. But apparently, uh, Miz and Morrison did something to Bad Bunny's DJ equipment. 
or whatever. So he's coming out there to address some things. And then, of course, Miz and Morrison get eliminated. And then uh, uh, Bad Bunny does a, uh, a top rope splash to both Miz and Morrison outside the ring. I did not care for that segment. It takes away from what's going on. It's cool to have celebrities and entertainers in wrestling, but not in that capacity. I, I didn't care for that. That was just, all right, cool, whatever. Next, Matt Riddle going against Shinsuke. Thought that was a nice exchange. We all know. Now, I think that would be a pretty good match. They are very stiff, very stiff in how they, you know, they perform their moves. So I would love to see more of Matt Riddle and uh, Shinsuke go at it. Um of course, Daniel Bryan was my pick to win the Royal Rumble. I thought he was. I'm going to get into that later on. Um, I don't know why Kane is here. Why is Kane in the match? Why was Hurricane, what was that dude's name? I forgot his name, the Hurricane. Why was he in the match? I, Kane and Hurricane. <laughs> That's stupid. Why are they in the match? Tell me. Somebody comment down below. Let me know why were they. All right, bro. Christian returning. Thought that was cool. Edge and Christian having their little, you know, their little nostalgia moment back in the ring. I thought that was cool. Um, <laughs> Dominic el eliminating Corbin. All right. Nice, you know, giving some Dom Dominic some momentum. But here's when things get really kind of weird for me. And this is why I always said sometimes in wrestling, you, you don't want to be too hokey because you kind of ruin future potential feuds, matches, and setups. So you guys remember how Rey Mysterio had been walking around with this blacked out section of his mask because his eye was, you know, you know, was messed up. It, you know, it, it slightly popped out from the eye for eye match with Seth Rollins. Y'all remember that, right? So for months he'd been walking around with the black patch. Tell me why he comes to the ring, his eyes just fine. Now I want y'all to understand. Your eye will never just be fine if it almost pops out, bro. Like, not a, let alone for a competition. <laughs> it's hard to look like you've never been touched, bro. Mind you, here's the thing, bro. <laughs> this nigga, Seth, was using his body weight to push his eye out on the corner of some steel steps. I want you to understand, that is brutal. If anything, your eye would probably just be destroyed. If it popped out, it is, but the optical nerve was attached. That's what they said medically. It popped out, but the optical nerve was attached, so he's fine. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> You're not coming back next year to be in the Royal Rumble, dog. And your eyes is fine. It's so fine that you're able to put contacts in. Because Ray has contacts in. <laughs> this is why... Matches like that shouldn't exist because you just have to question when this when this eye just go. All right, all right, back to the rest of this dog. <laughs> Seth Rollins returns as number twenty nine in the Royal Rumble. It was cool. He's still in his heel gimmick, which is good. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what fuse he he spark up in the future. I'm looking forward to that. Daniel Bryan versus. Uh, Matt Riddle, bro, that was a nice exchange, and I actually would like to see a match between those two. Comment down below if y'all would love to see a match between those two. They were putting on a wrestling clinic. That is what I like to see. Very stiff, very hard hitting, but they can do some ground and pound, ground and pound rat like mat maneuvers. They're they're literally just going into submission to submission. Very fantastic. Enjoyed that. All right, um. Seth eliminating Daniel Bryan. That kind of hurt my heart, man. I wanted Daniel Bryan, D. Bryan to win it, bro. I was like, damn it, man. I wanted him to win it so he can go to WrestleMania. So I'm not sure what he does at WrestleMania, but we will see. Then I want to say it's down to the last. Yeah, it's down to the last two because they um, Braun Strowman ends up getting eliminated. But it's down to the last two between Seth and uh, Edge, right? Seth, 
you know, they're going back and forth, and I, I think that's a good future match, in my opinion. Seth versus Edge, I think that would be fantastic, too. Um, Seth is going for the stomp. Edge is able to flip him over, over the top rope. So you think Edge wins. Now, in my mind, I was like, well, Randy Orton never got eliminated. And like I said, camera work is key. Out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, Randy Orton hits a massive RKO. You're thinking, oh, Randy's going to steal another one, bro. He's going to win the Royal Rumble again. And on, and somehow, some way, Edge was able to recover enough to send Randy Orton flying over the top rope. I thought that was the perfect icing on the cake to their feud. I eliminated you, bro. I took you out. I entered in as number one. You thought you had the upper hand. You thought you were going to be sneaky again. And I eliminated you, bro. Suck it. <laughs> it was great. It was That's how you get your redemption. You took me out of the game for months. I come back and I win the Royal Rumble. And what makes this so, so, like, special? I think he's one of three, if I'm not mistaken. I believe he's one of three wrestlers to ever enter in at number one. They enter in at number one and last the entire way through to win the Royal Rumble. And what makes this even more sentimentally, like like on a sentimental tip, uh, it was 11 years to the day, to the date, that's when he won his last Royal Rumble. He won his last Royal Rumble 11 years to the date to the, uh, to, uh, from yesterday. So that to me, that is poetic. If, if I've ever seen it, like to win your second Royal Rumble 11 years ago to the exact day, that is a, that is dope. That is amazing. It's, it's cool to see Edge back where he belongs in the WWE. And I'm not even mad with that. I'm not even mad with him winning the Royal Rumble. I thought that was cool. A beautiful touch. You can see he was emotional. You can see he was passionate. And... I'm all for it, bro. I am all for it. I think he's going to probably go against Drew. I'm willing to bet he's going to go against Drew. And it makes sense to go against Drew because he said, yo, I'm going for the title. I never lost because he had to relinquish the championship to retire. So he's like, yo, I'm going for the WWE championship. I think I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Now, if he was to go against Roman, that would be cool. But I don't think he needs to go against Roman. I think the Universal Championship, that's a, in my opinion, the new age, the new, the new age championship. But if it's somebody that grew up in the, the Attitude Era, there's only one championship they should ever really be going for. And that's none other than the WWE Championship. So I would love to see Edge versus Drew. Comment down below. Let me know who y'all think Edge should go for. Roman Reigns or Drew McIntyre? My money's on Drew. I think that would be a fantastic match. And if there's anybody that Drew should drop it to, I would not be opposed to him losing to Edge. I know you guys would be like, but wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be building up new stars. You're right. You're right. I get you that. But there are certain people that you would not oppose to having one more run. Edge never really got to finish off his run because he got hurt. Not once, but twice. He got hurt recently when he came back to the WWE, and then he got hurt 10 years ago. So he had to relinquish the title. So if there's anybody that I would be okay with at least having one more run would be Edge. Now, Edge could do Drew a solid, and I wouldn't be opposed to that. Say Drew beats Edge at the Royal at, uh, at WrestleMania. Now, that is an accolade that Drew could really hang his head on. He beat Edge. And Edge is, you know, a formidable opponent. So, a, you know, definitely a future Hall of Famer, multi-time champion. You know who Edge is. You know what I'm saying? So, that can it could go either way. Either outcome, I don't really care as long as they choose Drew. Now, if they do choose Roman, I think that would be amazing too. I don't know. We'll see, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing who uh, Edge will choose to face at WrestleMania. My money's on Drew McIntyre. But overall, this show was enjoyable. Uh, the only thing I didn't really care for is the Oldberg match. And I'm sorry that Drew was just on the back burner here. He should have had a better opponent for the Royal Rumble. Um, but honestly, if I want to keep it a buck, the only matches you really need to watch, the Men's Royal Rumble, the Women's Royal Rumble, 
and um, the last man standing match. Both the men's and women's mat, uh, Royal Rumble matches are hour long, and the last man standing match is like 30 plus. It's like around 30, 35 minutes. So that's two hours and 30 minutes of actual entertaining wrestling that I think a lot of people would enjoy. But overall, from the matches that I did see, I enjoyed this show and it's a thumbs up for me man it was a great way to start off my morning and i wanted to definitely make sure i got this video out for you guys today so comment down below let me know if you guys enjoyed the royal rumble and if you guys are looking forward to monday night raw and smackdown this week eh eh on the monday night raw but smackdown i'm definitely looking forward to but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have been amazing and uh, I appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.